Hitcock 45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from Middle Tennessee. Yes, I'm back in Middle Tennessee and thought I'd do a little yakking on the quote-unquote radio show. Give you a little update on what we've been up to and uh, just enjoy a private chat with you. No one else can hear. It's just between you and me. I'm just here on your computer screen and uh, nobody else will hear what we're talking about, right? Very intimate. Anyway, yes, almost forgot the home of Alvin York and Dolly Parton and many others. By the way, we uh, came through, almost through, the home of Dolly Parton there in Sevierville, Tennessee, just yesterday on the way back to Paradise here, Tennessee. Thought about stopping and having a chat with Dolly, but, uh, you know, she was probably busy and all that. <laughs> and actually not all that far from the home birthplace of Alvin York. I believe it's Paul Mall, Tennessee. I'll have to get up there and uh, check out. I believe there's a, a fairly nice memorial there and everything. I, I don't guess I've seen it. Uh, so anyway, I, I act a little uh, <laughs> in doubt there because... You know, maybe 30 years ago or something I did and came through and, you know, didn't remember, wasn't as familiar with Alvin York or something. You know how it is when you're you're dumb and young, uh, as we all are at times. But anyway, we're back and uh, we had a good trip to the Northeast. We've uh, been fortunate and have gotten our hands on some interesting firearms lately, some of uh, which you've not seen yet. So we're having a good time. I just did retire, quote unquote, from teaching, as you knew, if you've kept up with the channel. I Basically, I'm talking to you on my first official day as a, what did I say now? I'm a professional gunman, right? Since I uh, no longer am, I no longer am employed as a teacher so I'm just a professional gunman and I'll have to uh, make the best of that I guess you know I uh, say I retired from teaching and essentially I did it depends on how you how you look at it I did not reach the age of retirement necessarily or where I needed to retire or had to retire or anything like that I was you know getting you know, in the ballpark there within a few years, but could have taught, I don't know, five, six more years, I guess, if I wanted to. Uh, I was in private education, so I, I'm not even aware of any restrictions where I <laughs> have taught. I've taught in two different private schools. I, I guess I could have taught till I was 70 if I wanted to. And I feel quite healthy and uh, enjoy it more and more each year, to tell you the truth. I uh, enjoy the kids more than ever. And uh, I've always loved the material I've taught. So, but I don't know. I just uh, felt like it was time. Uh, this project is very demanding. Has gotten to where it's uh, demanded a lot of my time. So it's difficult to do both. And in this project, I am, as you may guess, self-employed, right? And that's always an attraction. And in the teaching profession, you're never self-employed, <laughs> rarely. You, uh, you, the, the teaching part of it's great, and uh, I'll miss it so much. I'll miss those kids so much. But, uh, you yeah, know, there's just, there's just things about the, the profession that uh, has changed, and uh, I, I just thought it was a good time to, to go ahead and pop out and... Quite honestly, if I were 22, 23, knowing what I know now, I would, uh, I would be attracted to the teaching profession as I was back in the early 70s. And again, in 1990, I would be attracted to it because it is, there's nothing that's really more enjoyable or rewarding or fun than teaching. But then uh, uh, it's changed, and there's a lot, a lot of things are different about the, you know, uh, 
the whole the whole deal parents uh, schools the the various uh focus and and all that so it's time for a guy it's it really it's quite amazing i guess someone like myself as independent uh, as i am independently minded uh, the way i think about things uh, it's quite uh, remarkable i suppose that i could really work within those systems this long to tell you the truth <laughs> so anyway i decided to retire and i had notified them uh, almost two years ago that uh, this would be my last year and it is and it was and here i am sitting here in my reloading room with nothing to do now i'm just going to move over to the porch and get in a rocker get comfy and sit for the next five years well not hardly i've got a long to-do list lots of guns to shoot and lots of things to do so uh no retirement for me it's just a different focus uh I hopefully have a little time uh, you know i i do want to just enjoy life and uh i have to spend several hours a day just uh, managing the the channel and then whatever time we spend you know working on videos but i hope to have two or three days a week where i do nothing except ride the harley uh you know just enjoy and enjoy doing nothing i enjoy everything else i do but i want to enjoy some time doing nothing how's that <laughs> probably won't do much of that knowing myself but anyway it'll be nice because you know there over the last four or five years i've really not i think enjoyed some of my firearms as much as i used to uh i mean in terms of time uh just picking up a good old bolt gun or a Colt single action, a lever gun, whatever it might be, and just hiking around the farm, the compound, you know, taking pot shots at old stumps or something. I, I used to do that regularly in the summers, and I I find that because of the uh, the time constraints of this project and everything else, you know, everybody has, you all, everybody has in your life that you have to do and get done. I I've not done that as much. I've not had as much leisure time. To spend with my sighted friends, my long-barreled friends, <laughs> I really haven't in a lot of ways. Even though I spend, I know that almost seems funny to you, because I do spend so much time shooting and uh, working with firearms. But I uh, do plan to get back to that and just doing nothing but prowling around the compound with a Swedish Mauser taking pot shots maybe one day. Maybe that's the only shooting I do. Just walk around and fire maybe 10 shots and just just enjoy that. And uh, that's the only thing I do other than managing the channel that day. So anyway, that part of it I, I look forward to. Partly because we'll have more time uh, you know, to, to work on the videos. So every spare day you know won't be uh, as critical that it won't be as critical that we fill it you know and get what we can to get you know get done and then be mad if it rains or whatever so we'll be able to uh you know enjoy enjoy life a little more and then still do what we want to do i think anyway that's kind of where i am and uh, i know some of you probably are in a similar spot maybe where you've retired recently or you've been retired and you know you're you're quite uh, an old pro at uh, killing time, right? <laughs> but uh, then many of you are very young, and uh, you've got all those years to look forward to. Hope that you're involved in a career that you find as rewarding as I did teaching, and that you are making a difference and enjoying what you do, even if you're not in the best situation. You know, I was in the publishing world for. Uh, about 11 years and I worked for two or three different publishers and different positions and oh I don't know had some success in different areas and I you know every one thing I try to remind young people and old people no company is perfect you know it really isn't I know we all reserve the right to complain about our company or whoever we work for but people are definitely far from perfect so obviously a company or a government or anybody is going to be far from perfect there are going to be things uh within the company where you work right now that just irritate you to no end and if you are 
young and maybe it's your first you know gig your first job uh, or second job you yeah, I think it's easy to to uh, misinterpret maybe some of that just because you don't have as large a frame of reference I don't speak as somebody who is smarter than you even though I'm sure I am <laughs> no <laughs> sorry <laughs> uh, no I don't speak as somebody who is smarter than you I uh, uh, I don't mean to be condescending, although I look down on everybody being 6'8". <laughs> hey, you can tell already my humor's taking a new level, right? Retirement. <laughs> hey, I don't have kids to pick on. I'm sorry, it's you all. It's you now, man. You're the target. Uh, no, uh, I just have more years and uh, have been through a lot of different companies and a couple, three different school systems, private schools, and I know from experience even I learn a little bit from experience that there are going to be things you don't like, you do not agree with, things you cannot change. There'll be people you think ought to listen to your ideas and don't. Uh, you know, it's just one of those deals. That's the way it is. And you, I, you, you got to be one of those people that you either see the glass half full, half empty, and make the changes you can or pick the battles uh, that you you think there's a chance at winning and it's just the way it's going to be. There are going to be things you're not going to like and uh, I know I've probably done it. I know people do it all the time. Throw away good jobs, good positions. Uh, really for small reasons maybe and then years later realize you know that really wasn't that bad. <laughs> You know, the, the last two companies I've worked for are worse than that, and I got mad and quit, or, you know, whatever whatever you might have done. But anyway, just keep that in mind. Keep things in perspective. Uh, where you're working right now, or even what you're doing for yourself employed uh, there are going to be headaches no matter where you are and uh, where you're working. And it's just a matter of trading headaches when you uh, switch companies. So most of you know that. But uh, just in case you're a youngster out there at your first job, and the world isn't what you thought it was going to be, and these people are total idiots. Can't believe you took that job. Well, might just be the way it is in a lot of places, because you're going to find an idiot here and there no matter where you're working, and they might just be in charge, really. <laughs> One of the things about education is you have to watch for, if you have a, an inclination in that area, you got to ask yourself why the folks who are administrators are administrators and they are no longer teachers because invariably almost every one of them was in the classroom and as you probably know teaching is difficult it's not easy it is a challenge some people just cannot handle the classroom now you remember that right from being in school <laughs> Wow, remember that teacher that just could not handle kids? They drove him or her crazy. Uh, I always wonder with some administrators, was that one of those guys <laughs> or one of those gals that now is spending their time t telling everybody else what to do and how to do it and writing books on it when if you could go back in time, It'd be interesting to see how they did in the classroom, right? So, but anyway, I digress. I uh, pontificate a little too much. I uh, don't want to become one of those reform smokers that's an expert, you know, and all that kind of thing. I, uh, it is interesting, though, once you leave and get some distance, uh, I'm sure I'll, uh, I'll gain more insight into to everything. Uh, yeah, you really, there's really truth in that, I have discovered. Until you totally get away from something that you've been doing, you, uh, you, you, you just have a different perspective. Uh, you, you, you really do see see things differently when you get away from it. I can look back on a couple of different positions I had uh, back in the 80s, even, and uh, various situations I was in that were difficult or whatever it might have been. Positions I took, maybe I shouldn't have, uh, but I, I really have a, a better perspective on all that now that I'm not in the center of that or a tornado. So anyway, enough about me. What about you? What have you guys been up to? Uh, you guys are awfully quiet whenever I do a radio show. But just keep eating the popcorn and uh, watching the movie and cleaning the guns. I'll uh, careful there. You got a little too much oil on that. 
I'll uh, keep talking. Well, most of you know probably that John and I were on a trip over Memorial Day weekend. Yep, some uh, hot women invited us up to Philadelphia, so we had to go spend some time with them. Just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> Although I did see some very attractive uh, ladies in Philadelphia, I will say. But the attraction was the uh, the gun rights across America rally there in uh, Independence Park. And uh, they had invited me, as you know, to speak. And I'm not a speaker, that kind of thing. Uh, but I did. I, I couldn't turn it down, really. I thought John and I could turn that into a, a trip. Well, duh. It is a trip, right? You don't have to turn it into a trip. But we turned it into a little mini vacation and, you know, go to Washington, D.C. and uh, Gettysburg and, you know, tour Philadelphia and just some things like that while we were up there. And so it'd be a nice trip. I knew my school year would be over. I had, in fact, take my last day off in order to do it. But, but we did that. And uh, had a great trip, really did. A lot of driving, but we, we wanted to drive because we were going to do a lot of driving either way. Even if we had flown and rented a car, we were going to do a lot of driving. So we just decided to get in the car and go. A little simpler in a lot of ways. And uh, we got to see all of Virginia <laughs> on the way up there. <laughs> what a beautiful state to drive through. I'd driven through that you know, several times, but uh, just gorgeous in the spring up through the Shenandoah Valley. Wow, what a place to have about 100 acres or 1,000 acres. That would be the ultimate. But uh, we did go to Gettysburg. That was cool on the way up. I enjoyed that. We didn't spend as much time as would be uh, ideal at any of these places, but we did take in a lot of different uh, spots like Gettysburg, toured the battlefield a little bit, and didn't have time to get hooked into a tour, you know, an all-day tour or half-day tour or anything. So we just went around to some of the, the places ourselves, ourselves, you know, the Cemetery Ridge and just around. And uh, toured some of the shops, ate there in Gettysburg. Really neat old town. Gosh, what a cool town. Uh, where was that we ate? We ate this neat uh, old restaurant. Uh, this old building, been there for two or three hundred years. Uh, the, what, the Spring House restaurant, I think it was? down in the basement really neat and uh, went through some gun shops imagine that me going through a gun shop yeah you have your usual souvenir shops in a place like that of course but there were a couple of uh, really really nice gun shops uh, can't even think of the names of them now <laughs> they're right across from the battlefield literally across the street but one uh, specialized in I guess you'd say high dollar, really, really nice, you know, collectible swords and and rifles, you know, revolvers, those sorts of things. And the other one was much larger, but had uh, a wider range of, of uh, you know, guns. Almost all, of course, Civil War uh, era firearms. Uh, imagine that at the Gettysburg battlefield. But uh, oh, tempting, tempting. I. I I have to admit, I have a, a, you know, everybody, all of us, we have a gun on our radar, don't we? <laughs> Every single one of you out there, if we could do a survey or poll, you have a firearm on your radar. You may not be ready to purchase it tomorrow, but we all have that next rifle, that next pistol, right? Even if you've got all the guns you need, quote unquote, there's, there's one out there, yeah, wouldn't mind having uh, whatever it might be, you know, a Mauser if I ran into one, or a uh, Glock 19 you don't have yet. What's wrong with you if you don't? But there's always a firearm out there that, that's that, that next one or one that you'd kind of like to have uh, in, in some particular area. You know, you might be into modern guns, but there's a Colt single action you'd like to have one day or something. A, well, you know, I have the replica of that really nice Enfield 58 uh, caliber Civil War rifle. It's in a couple, three videos. And I have the old brown vest, the shortened brown vest. But uh, I wouldn't mind having an original cap lock. Either the Enfield, but I think since I have that nice replica, I don't ever plan to get rid of that. I think I'd 
maybe like to have a, an 1863 Springfield or 61 or 62 or 63. I think the 63 model is the most common, but I, I would like to have one of those in pretty good shape sometime. You know, an original, one that was used, but uh, they ain't cheap, as for sure. Uh, but that that those are those are really cool guns. And one again, if you know you know me, you know I, I really uh, like the firearms that were common in a particular period or or war. You know, a Garand, M1 carbine, a Thompson. Uh, you know, 1911. You know, if I'm going to delve into collectible military firearms I'm, I'm more interested in the ones that most people carried than yeah I know there are lots of interesting firearms that were made during almost any period that most people are not even aware of I mean there's no doubt about that uh, but I, I guess from a historical standpoint and you know I, I think most of us are probably that way if you're gonna have an old gun from the cowboy days you know, you're going to have one. Do, do you want something that there were only a thousand of them produced or something uh, just because it's rare? Um, you know, and most of the people living even during the time might not have been aware of it. I don't know. I mean, some collect collectors find that fascinating and that's interesting. And sometimes those are better made guns and they're very interesting firearms. But I, I just like to get something that's representative of the time period, something that... Uh, so many people carried and knew about it's uh, to me it's a little bit more uh, I don't know more of a piece of history I guess you could say so anyway anyway the 1863 Springfield is one of those those firearms that's on my radar uh, what about the trip what else well Gettysburg was cool you know I mean wow I'd like to go back and, and spend more time there and I realized that this is the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg this summer. So that's a huge event. I'm tempted to make my way back up there in early July. That would be a very, very interesting place to be, wouldn't it? I don't know where you'd stay. <laughs> Probably sleep in the car. Uh, we had a hard enough time finding rooms on this trip. But uh, anyway, that, that that's a really cool place to go if you ever get a chance. Uh, I, it looks to me like you could spend a day just walking around Gettysburg enjoying the town. It's a really neat old town. Spending time in Philadelphia was cool too, of course. And, of course, the rally. Uh, Save the Second uh, was uh, the title of that event that uh, Gun Rights Across America kind of sponsored. And uh, that was, that was uh, really cool. I, I need to get out my list of, of speakers. I've forgotten all the people that even spoke, and and am <laughs> ashamed to say I'm not. I wasn't familiar with some of them, and uh, I'll need to get that list out. But there were some neat people, some young folks. There were, uh, you know, real celebrities there that spoke. Uh, Larry Pratt from Gun Owners of America. You know, Alan Keyes and. Uh, uh, I guess they're, I don't know if they're a couple. I, I, I've got to admit, I'm sorry, I don't watch uh, the, what, Sons of Guns, the uh, Red Jacket thing. I think I have seen that one time a couple years ago. So, um, as usual, I'm out of the loop on a lot, a lot of things. I, but the, the, I think her name was Stephanie, and then uh, I forget the guy's name. I, I met him, Chris, I think. But uh, they, were, they were there, and they spoke, and uh, uh, Sheriff Richard Mack, uh, spoke and was there with his books and things uh, and there were just a lot of lot of interesting people there that 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 spoke and uh, hang around with uh, John and I enjoyed the uh, more than anything of course is meeting a lot of you viewers that were up there and uh, that that's just uh, I don't know just something we really really uh, enjoy doing and it's it's one of the reasons we are likely to go somewhere like that to tell you the truth to uh, let y'all know we're going to be there and then uh, meet you all, chat with you. So we met a lot of you probably who are listening to this and some of your youngsters and that was just a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we get a chance to, to do that sort of thing and have the time to do it. We'll, we'll do it again and we'll let you know if we're going to be in, in that area, uh, generally speaking. So, uh, so that was cool. 
but uh, boy to be right there in Independence Park and uh, you know for the reasons that we were there to support the Second Amendment was just special you know it really was that literally in the shadow of Independence Hall you know with the liter uh, Liberty Bell there and just you know it's just uh, a cool place to be when you think of the history and what took place there you know the signing of the Declaration of Independence and working out the the Constitution with George Washington presiding and it's just just right there um, as I said in the speech you know, I mean I it, speech quote unquote that that's what makes that so special and we just uh, one of the main points I was trying to make here we are think about what these people did for us right here in this building and uh, we're about to just mess it up if we're not careful we don't hold our politicians you know feet to the fire but again I don't consider myself a good speaker at that sort of thing and I'm not a rally speaker I'm a reloading room rambler right and uh, but I'm trying to do a little bit better. I think I'll do a little bit better at this one than at the last one. Who knows? If I do enough of these things, I might end up uh, being a speech maker. Okay? I'll, I'll be such a great speech maker that I'll just say, uh, okay, for $50,000, I will travel to your state and make a speech. I'll be like an ex president. How's that? <laughs> Now, I do want to get better at it if uh, if I ever get another invite like that. It's something I can go or attend. Uh, and I I figured out I need to just make sure I don't ramble. Get me a couple of notes together and, and keep it brief and uh, you know, speak loudly and, uh, you know, pass out a lot of beer before I get up there so people will uh, be more agreeable and enjoy what I have to say. <laughs> I had uh, contracted with a couple of the, the youngsters that were there. I met some of the, the kids of uh, some viewers that uh, I gave them strict instructions to uh, applaud you know, while I was up there. You know, Even if I didn't say anything uh, worthy to make sure they applaud. <laughs> uh, I just can't give up picking on kids. But it's because they're so gullible. You know, it, It's too much fun. But anyway, that was a great uh, place to be. Wow. On Memorial Day weekend. You know, I mean, what a what a perfect, not a really storm, but uh, what a, a, a great timing of all that to be there on Memorial Day weekend uh, to support the Bill of Rights, you know, at Independence Hall in Philadelphia. Uh, does it get much better than that? You know, crowds were, I guess, mediocre. I, I guess the crowd uh, for the Second Amendment thing was about like uh, the, the first one we had here in Nashville. Uh, Whenever that was, I lost track of time and everything else the last two weeks. I've been so busy. But, uh, you know, I, I think I've come to the conclusion that, that these are not just, they are not going to bring out thousands and thousands of people generally. Now, I know New, I think New York did because they're about to lose all their rights. But unless there's something boiling in your state that's about to take your guns away the next week, I have a feeling that's just the the normal for these things. You're, you're going to get whatever, 500 or 1,000 people at uh, an average, a typical Second Amendment rally. Yeah, a lot of people just are not going to come out. I don't know what the reason is. You get a lot of, uh, of course, really devoted and uh, you know uh, active folks at them, and it's great. But... You know, those other 5,000 people, I don't know where they are. You know, they're living in the area, and they support the Second Amendment, and they own guns. But for some reason, they're just not or don't seem to be inclined to come out to these things. I, I wish they would and, and see what, what fun it is. I mean, how cool is it to just go down there and support the Second Amendment and, and chat with fellow gun owners? You know, I don't know. But it was it was great, and uh, I'm so glad that that John and I went. We uh, we enjoyed it, and this time uh, John recorded more. We we thought we would since it was uh, you know at Independence Hall, particularly, and you know, we'll we'll stick that up on the on the channel here. It may be up already when you're hearing this, or you know a day or two or something like that. Well, it, nothing dramatic, nothing that great, but just a little footage from. From there, around the, you know, the park, Independence Park, and uh, probably the the uh, mediocre speech I gave, 
and some pieces of other speeches. I'm not sure what all John did get there. We, we're really bad. I, I admit, uh, apologize, I confess. When we go to events and things, we're really not there as uh, to do a travel log. We're, we don't really, uh, we're not uh, as good about, I don't know, creating the ultimate video of, of this event. We, we're there, we're just there and to participate and, and be there. And lots of times we'll go to places, whether it's Knob Creek or anywhere else, we don't even get the camera out. You know, uh, I'm just a shooter and uh, I go have been going to these things for many, many years, whether it's Friendship Indiana to the muzzleloading uh, events. I go up twice a year, generally. And I think we did a little something one year on that, but you know, we, we just go as shooters and, uh, you know, and we'll tell you about it, but we don't always you know, do a video on these things. We're just weird, let's face it. From Philadelphia, we came down to Washington, D.C., and drove down late at night, worn out, tired. I think we got into the D.C. area around 1 o'clock in the morning, something like that, 1.30, and uh, there was not a room anywhere. We weren't really sure what our schedule would be and where we would go so we thought, well we'll just we we're trying to stay flexible and just you know you get a room somewhere well it was tough it was really tough everybody was in washington and uh we checked several hotels we wanted to stay in virginia we definitely did not want to stay in dc uh need i explain why but uh we want to stay in more gun-friendly Virginia as we had stayed in gun-friendly Pennsylvania you know so we were just skipping over Maryland we wanted to dance through Maryland and uh, DC as quickly as possible and and then stay in uh, Northern Virginia Fairfax but wow there was not a room to be had anywhere that we looked and uh, we finally got a line on a place and uh, hotel manager another uh, hotel called them it was funny it was in Vienna uh, right there not too far from Fairfax and Virginia and the guy said well I have one room left but there's some bikers kind of having a party out there and I don't know if you know they'd want that room and all this kind of thing and so we said well man it sounds like the only place uh, we may go down there and look at it and turns out it was this uh, motel and an older motel and the rolling thunder had rolled in there and they basically had the entire hotel i think there were 200 of them staying there and it was essentially every room uh, except that one i guess that was available <laughs> it's kind of a, a an area where it in in uh, what would you call it a uh not a quadrangle area but you had the, the rooms all around and there were they had a kind of an awning up or a little roof and they were having a party but it was it was dwindling the party was dying down kinda and uh, so we said that's ah, all right we'll we'll make do <laughs> you know they they deserve the party and if you're familiar with the Rolling Thunder it's you know the the vets biker group and of course they were going to parade in uh, D.C. the next day and we saw that of course a big big uh, parade tour whatever you want to call it they uh they drove around the the mall there in dc for it, it for hours the interesting thousands of them anyway a lot of them were at that that motel so we stayed there and uh finally got a you know a room went into dc and and it was perfect timing i mean just just as luck would have it about the time we we got there and parked walked over there the uh the rolling thunder was uh, getting assembled and about ready to roll it was it was great we just walked right up parked not that far really from the uh, lincoln memorial which is pretty amazing on the street back there and boy if you're a motorcycle fan you'd have loved this was uh this was heaven there were thousands of motorcycles there parked in the grass and everywhere and of every sort you can imagine you know, uh, the ultimate motorcycle show and then of course rolling thunder about about ready to roll 
and uh, they did. And so we watched that uh, for a long time, and then we maneuvered around down by the Potomac and got around their course. That was like it was never going to end, and we wanted to walk around and head up to the other end, the capital uh, end of the, the the mall. And uh, oh, wow, I mean that uh, they they kept rolling around that plaza for or mall, I guess, a couple more hours at least. It was amazing. Uh, I, I'd never seen it before, but uh, they just kept at it for a long, long, the longest time. And uh, so anyway, it was neat to be there. In fact, uh, if you saw the little FAQ we did there on the, the mall, uh, they were rolling around there at that particular moment. So uh, interesting stuff, interesting. And... Uh, it's always good to go to Washington. I don't know if you've been there. Uh, should put that on your list sometime. I've been there, I don't know, five or six different times. But it's always a neat place to go. And, uh, you know, just just trying to walk around there. And, and we didn't take time to go through the museums and everything on this trip. We just, uh, just wanted to hit the highlights again there and walk around a little bit and enjoy it. But uh, quite, a, quite a place, quite an event. I tell you, there's something uh, I'll I'll share with you uh, because it relates to what we do and what we shooters uh, need to keep in mind. You know, the Rolling Thunder is obviously a, a group that you know a lot of people would support, and uh, we should. They're vets and they're they're bikers, they're biker vets, I guess, whatever you'd say, and, and they have a pretty strong organization. Do like a lot of good, I guess. I, I heard some people speak on their behalf there and, and everything and ready to donate. But uh, you know, coming back out Route 66 out of D.C., uh, I won't go into details, but uh, they were leaving about the same time, same time we were, or at least a lot of them. It was kind of funny because we kind of went in with them and then they kind of left with them. We were in a car, of course, we we're old-fashioned car. But uh, we had a little incident on the road where one of them made an ass of himself, let me put it mildly, and uh, did not represent his group very well. John and I came away with a bad taste in our mouths uh, for the Rolling Thunder for that reason. You know, really, I, I, I in good conscience, could not write a check to that organization. Maybe, uh, maybe in six months I could. And it just... Uh, it, uh, I mean, it's a situation that could have ended up in a confrontation, just about did, and uh, probably would have if I hadn't been in D.C., you know, and, and anyway. Uh, as, again, we'll go into detail, but some big fat slob uh, idiot, you've probably been drinking or something, you know, on top of everything else, maybe he's tired from, you know, running around there for three hours, I don't know, try giving the benefit of the doubt, but uh, John and I were very disappointed not happy uh, but it, it the main point though is you know as uh, think about that as, as shooters you know and I know I preach this a lot but we really have to be aware of how we you know present ourselves on the internet and just anywhere uh, you know especially on the internet because uh, everybody's out there looking on it but heck half the population just lives on the internet now they their, their virtual life is their their life now uh, you know, people are watching, and and it's just a fact of human nature. When when somebody, oh, just I don't know, does not behave well, uh, behaves in a very unimpressive manner, uh, or insults you, or whatever the situation might be, and they're a part of some group. Yeah, you know, it just doesn't matter if they're the only one out of ten thousand like that. You can't help but associate that with that group. You really can't. And uh, partly because, you know, when someone is with a group, you're traveling with a group or you're wearing the colors, you're wearing uh, the flag, you're wearing the, uh, the jacket or whatever it is. Maybe it's uh, your school or your company, whatever the organization might be, then you know that. You know, I uh, I have always cautioned students. You know, uh, okay, now we're going off campus, 
we're going on a bowling trip or a ball game, whatever we're doing, you know, if you're acting silly here or you're doing something, it's because we're allowing it. You know, it's because that's just what we're doing. But when we're off campus, you're wearing that shirt with the school name on it. You know, you're an advertisement for the school. Just keep in mind, you are representing your school, you're representing your family, you're representing yourself, you're representing me because I'm in charge of you. Uh, I'm the responsible, quote unquote, adult. You know, so just be aware. I always caution them, just remind them about that. And because of that, we all know that. Uh, you know, we, when you're wearing the shirt with your company name on it, whatever you're doing, you're, uh, you know, just you're representing it, and and people are quick to judge. They are, because they know you should know that you're wearing the company name on your shirt. So there is some uh, legitimacy there. There's a reason that people judge you. They see you with that organization, with that shirt. You know, just like at the Second Amendment rally. Anybody that's at that rally in Philadelphia is a gun guy, a gun gal, a uh, Second Amendment supporter. So anybody watching and, and seeing us, if, if one of us did something outlandish, uh, you know, we represent the group. We At that point, we are, because we're there with the group, we're representing, definitely, we're always representing gun owners, but there we definitely are we're wearing the flag so to speak you know so but anyway it, it's just it was a reminder uh thought i'd pass it along that you know you, you can you can give your group a bad reputation in a hurry you know it's just uh it's just really simple and to do it and you know someone like myself i consider myself fairly mature uh been around a while i'm uh Maybe not the wisest person out there, but I kind of know there's always an idiot in every group. We all know that intellectually. Doesn't matter though. Uh, you know, somebody uh, acts up when they're representing a certain uh, outfit. Can't can't uh, ignore it. Can't ignore it. So it's a it's a lesson to to us gun owners. I thought I'd just pass that along. Hey, all this gun talk, and you know what? I have not uh, showed you. Have not shown you what I'm playing with in this, uh, well, it's not a video, but in this radio show, quote unquote. Hear that? Probably uh, would have a difficult time uh, determining what that is. I don't, I can't imagine why, right? <laughs> a lot of guns sound pretty much alike on the radio. Click. All right, well, uh, this happens to be my PM9. Yes, hot weather has arrived, hasn't it? Well, sort of. It wasn't that hot up in the Northeast uh, this past weekend, but it has. And so I'm uh, finding myself with my PM9 again quite often. Uh, when all else fails, when you're not sure how to dress properly, what kind of attire you might need to carry your Glock or a larger firearm, you know, the old PM9 will always work. It will always work. Uh, for me, at least. It is a little bit on the larger size for a lot of people for a pocket gun. But uh, I like it fine, and uh, I find it works okay in the pocket. I don't really think it prints um, much <laughs> with the uh, holsters. I, You know, I like the uh, Alabama pocket holster. Ah, hear that? Click in. <laughs> and it, it does okay. Does all right, and so uh, I'm still carrying that mostly. I carried the XDS last summer a lot, but uh, I think I'm back to this. I don't know for for right now. It's just a problem when you, uh, you know, we all face it. We all battle that that issue in hot weather. What to carry? We'd all like to carry a big gun all the time. If we are shooters and we know how to use them, and we all have our favorite uh, large firearm, don't we? Pistol. Just not always convenient to have it. It's just that simple. It's all a matter of compromise, which is what a pistol is anyway, isn't it? A handgun, it's a compromise. If we knew we were going to face bad guys today, we would have a shotgun or maybe a 308, right? But hard to do that. So uh, we basically compromise with a handgun. 
and they are all compromises 9 380 40 45 uh, there's no magic bullet in a handgun and I think most experts will will uh, confirm that no magic bullets out there so uh, whatever suits you that you can carry uh, just go with it and know how to use it make sure it's reliable with the ammunition you carry and that you know where that ammo is going to hit and what it feels like and that, not on you but that what the recoil feels like oh yeah shoot yourself in the leg you need to know what that ammo feels like there's an idea uh, no I wouldn't recommend that but just just you know know what it feels like uh, one thing I guess I've talked about this you know John did this just the other day was uh, replenishing some ammo in, in his carry gun his pocket version and just uh, went out and you know had not shot it maybe in a month but just pulled it out of his pocket and fired you know and made the statement uh, well let's see if I would have been killed let's see if my gun would have worked you know the the last 30 days or six months uh, if something had come up and you know it worked fine ammo performed and the gun functioned it was a semi-automatic and that's always good to do I highly recommend that when you are uh, going to like recycle ammo replenish with fresh ammo or whatever you decide I need to clean this gun out I haven't fired it for a couple of weeks uh, need to empty it make sure there's no dust or cobwebs and whatever uh, do it at the range uh, well I mean make sure the barrels not plugged with mud or something but just pull it out wherever you keep it and shoot it pretend uh, the balloon has gone up you've got to hit that target you know, I mean, that's always a wise thing to do. That tells you something, doesn't it? That's one of the advantages of competition, participating in competition. And, and you know, I did a lot of that. And no, it's not the real world, even IDPA. And uh, it's not the real world scenarios and situations necessarily. But it, it uh, people who compete and, and participate in uh, shooting matches generally uh, are well, I'll say they're probably better shooters under stress, maybe. I don't know. The one thing it gives you, and I don't want to overblow it, but it does give you a situation where you've got to maybe make some decisions, simple though they might be, uh, use your gun, reload it on the move, or from behind cover and have to engage a target while you are looking around a wall and changing magazines, and you're, you're using the stuff your magazines, your gun, your ammo that you think is going to work, you think works okay, then sometimes you find out something doesn't work as you thought it would. Maybe the gun's not as reliable from a certain position or it's easy to uh, limp wrist this, this pistol uh, unless you're standing you know, straight up in an isosceles stance or something or you realize oh, that magazine doesn't work as well as I thought it would with this ammo or you, know, you, you do realize some things. You also realize with that clock in your ear, that timer, uh, that does add a certain amount of stress. Nothing like being shot at, I'm sure, <laughs> but it is a small level of stress. And if you're having difficulty handling that, that tells you something, right? You know, if you find yourself really nervous and unable to shoot very well because there's a timer and a range officer, uh, running along behind you or moving along behind you you find that very stressful and and uh, difficult to uh, hit your target and remember when to reload or whatever it might be well guess what I would guess that that's a very minimal amount of stress as compared with uh, dodging bullets so just uh, just some thinking there but so it, it you know it, it's not uh, the magic, uh, the panacea, you know, go compete in matches and man your ray for anything. It's not real training, but it uh, it does help you test your equipment, let you shoot under a little bit of stress, and, and then have fun too. If it was too stressful, it wouldn't be fun, right? So, uh, anyway, I kind of got off uh, onto that, didn't I? That's what I tend to do. I told you, I'm not a very good speech maker. I excel at rambling. I'm a little bit ADD. I go off on tangents, and who knows? I might start talking about this, uh, <laughs> oh, this inert 50 caliber round here, and spend 10 minutes talking about it or something. But you just never know about me. 
We have, by the way, uh, several different firearms we're going to be enjoying this summer, off and on, as well as getting back to some I'm anxious to get back to, but uh, I have a long list, and we're not going to put something up every two days, but we do have a, a long list of firearms and uh, some offers on firearms to, to borrow and just different things, uh, which brings me to a point. Uh, you know, our mission really for John and, and myself is not to be the ultimate gun test channel, the gun tester. Uh, I don't know that anybody uh, tries to do that. It's just a reminder. You know, testing guns, and even though some of the firearms I get in from manufacturers are, are T&E guns, test and evaluation, it's, it's really kind of a marketing thing. It always comes out of the marketing department, if that tells you anything, uh, from the various gun companies. But, uh, you know, I guess our mission is, with the fairly large audience that we've, uh, we've developed uh, that's, that's come on board, it's still to just demonstrate firearms and, you know, spread the word, show the fun, uh, provide some education about various firearms and how to use them safely. Uh, and you know, and have fun with them, and occasionally uh, maybe push the edge a little bit, do something uh, a little bit dramatic just uh, for fun because we can. You know, we, you know, it's probably difficult for many of you to shoot up a barrel, 55 gallon barrel of water in your backyard, you know, just to see what a particular caliber will do and how many rounds it takes to empty it and blow it up and all that kind of thing. Uh, we're, we're just able to do some of that stuff, and it is fun. I mean, hey. Do I have to tell you that? It's fun. And uh, and I know it's fun to see it on a video. It's fun for me. I could go back to every one of our barrel shoots and just watch them, the drum shoots, uh, or shooting up clay pots, or where we massacre a bunch of uh, two liters or something. It's just cool. And uh, we know that you all like it too. I mean, most of you. Everybody doesn't like everything. But yeah, so we enjoy that too. But by and large, we are uh, just trying to bring you a lot of different firearms and give you some information about them, most of which are already tested. They're out there. Uh, you know, most guns work. Let's face it, guns have to. I mean, it's like cars. You know, a car's going to work. It's just a matter of whether it fits you, and maybe one car is not going to last 200,000 miles where another one, you know, will. You know, so, yeah, for the most part, uh, so we're not the gun tester channel. We don't pretend to be. To do that properly, it would be, I think, a lot more boring. We would have to take a firearm and just continually shoot it and test it in different ammo. That same gun, hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands and thousands of rounds if we're actually running some sort of test. Like, what kind of test are we running? How many rounds will it uh fire before it malfunctions? How many rounds can it fire before it begins to wear? I, I don't know. Almost all guns are going to last longer than, than us. It's really difficult to wear out a, a firearm. Uh, you know, there's exceptions maybe. Uh, some little J-frame made out of lightweight aluminum or something is not meant to be fired thousands of rounds. I mean, maybe something like that, but I don't know. that. The, to me, the test, the, the real test, is uh, as far as a thorough uh, time-based test, is out there, basically. Uh, if, if I'm looking for a firearm, let's say I'm con contemplating buying a what some model of a Taurus or a Smith & Wesson or a Glock, and I just Google that, that gun. I will, it, you know, y'all do this. It will take you to forums. It will take you to YouTube videos. It'll take you to articles on that firearm. It'll take you everywhere on it. And a pattern develops. I mean, you could just drop a, a, a name. You could, uh, I could pull a name out of a hat of any particular firearm. Preferably some firearm I'm, I'm not familiar with at all. I mean, really at all. And, and Google it. And in about uh, 30 minutes, well, <laughs> maybe five minutes or less, but over a short period of time, I could prowl around some forums because 
you know, Googling around would take me to topics on forums, gun forums, discussion forums, where, where guys like you and, and I are discussing that firearm and problems we've had with it or successes we've had with it, how it works, how we like it. Uh, you know, not marketing stuff, just you and me, people like us, would be discussing that. And I, I like to go to those. I do that for sure because it, it tells you things. Now you also get a lot of griping or you you, know, you can get slanted opinions, obviously. You, they land on one forum. But if you if you prowl around and visit a lot of different conversations about that firearm you're thinking about purchasing, just wondering uh, what people are saying about it, what they're finding out about it, what, you know, what's the verdict. Uh, you do begin to see, don't you? Uh, you see there's mixed reviews on it. Um, and of course, anything, because anything negative about a firearm, if, if, uh, if, if there is a little issue maybe with the extraction with that firearm or reliability or, I, I don't know, sights falling off or whatever, it, you will find it you will find it pretty quickly. You'll find the negative stuff very, very quickly because I think people are more likely to post that. You know? And, you know, I, you can develop an impression pretty easily. And that gun may have been out for four or five years, maybe 20 years. Uh, I mean, you can find out really the history, how that gun is going, how well it's received and uh, who's using it and how well it's liked. and. And what you're doing there is you're tapping into maybe hundreds of people who have years of experience with that firearm. You know, I can't duplicate that in a month or in a week. You know, I just can't. Uh, I can, I can uh, convey whatever knowledge I have you know, regarding that, uh, or and then my experience with it. And if if I know because of my research that. I have uncovered some of that, uh, and there are a lot of people who have trouble with it. You know, I'll pass that along. But you know, the mixed reviews or, or whatever, uh, like with the uh, what was it the DB9? I know those guns get really mixed reviews. There's people who love them, but there's a lot of people that have trouble with them. You know, we actually had some trouble in our video with them. But our video, I guess, was kind of representative of of what goes on with the DB9s and the whatever the other one is in 380. Uh, but that that was in some ways uh, happenstance. That was just just the way it worked out. We we might not have had any trouble with it with the one we had, you know. So you know, to really get valid information, uh, if you're actually ready to go buy something, you need to prowl around uh, more so than just our videos, right? I'll give you my impression and what I know about it and how it shoots for me and everything. But you, you know that, you know to do your research and, uh, and dig around because that's the real test. People who, lots of people who have owned it and what their experiences are with it, that, that's pretty good. And, and you can kind of tell on forums, your favorite forums, you know who maybe even some of the uh, users are that don't like anything, you know, or uh, just have trouble with whatever they have. You know, if somebody's complaining about how Glocks are unreliable all the time or something, you know that's a clue. You know, <laughs> maybe everything they shoot's unreliable. But uh, anyway, we're not really trying to be the ultimate gun tester channel. We are just giving you what uh, our impressions are of a firearm and how it seems to work for us. We're not, uh, as I've mentioned many times before, our goal is not to bash firearms. Try to give the companies a chance, you know, to make good on it and everything. But uh, just kind of show what what is doing and we rarely edit our videos uh, you know rarely ever and definitely not ever to hide anything we uh well we did hide a sneeze john had a big sneeze in one <laughs> i think about a month ago you know things like that or if we're uh, doing a video where we have one magazine with uh, as with the what was it the mac 11 i guess we had one magazine and uh, so and even with the well, you haven't seen that video yet. But if we said one or two magazines, we might uh, uh, reload, you know, off the off the camera or something like that. But uh, by and large, it's they're unedited. So anyway, we're not the gun testers of the world, but we try to bring you uh, something useful.
one thing in Philadelphia I meant to, to mention was kind of funny. You know, there were some uh, big name speakers uh, speaking there, Alan Keyes and Larry Pratt and different folks. And it was funny, they had kind of a, an area uh, 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 set aside or established where we could go across the street and quote unquote get away from the crowd. They were calling it the green room, uh, the people helping to manage that. And it was, uh, it was, it was funny, a little funny to John and, and me. We were there. Was their guy. It was really, really well run, and there were a couple of guys that were uh, helping out and making sure everything went smoothly. And uh, especially for all the speakers, making sure we had what we need, knew when we were up, and everything, and and we, it, you know, making sure we knew where to to go to the quote unquote green room. And uh, it was funny because we were talking with uh, a lot of viewers there. Shortly after we got there, we were just having big conversations and everything. And you know, they were they were uh, they were wanting to help us by you know letting us go to the green room. I think they they <laughs> they they felt like we were being I don't know overworked or or maybe we were being bothered too much or something and it was it was kind of funny that was a reason that we went i mean it's one of the reasons that that we went we uh we enjoy meeting you all chatting with you and there's never too much of that oh my gosh we we're just there for a few hours and we wanted to meet as many people as we could from the area and uh anybody that wanted to, to chat and that sort of thing or wanted a picture uh, lord knows why you'd want a picture I guess there's a lot of dartboards, you know, being shooters, you know. But uh, anyway, it, it was funny. We did leave uh, to get lunch and found a place to eat and came back. And yeah, but by and large, we just wanted to be there. And and we because of that, we missed some of the speeches and some of the things that went on. But uh, it did go on for several hours. But uh, but it was it was very well run and. It's just a, a good experience. We had a good time. I had an experience just this morning. Went out on the Harley, enjoying my retirement. Uh, before we get back into making videos here for a, a day or a day and a half, and I uh, had to run and pick up some ammo uh, south of Nashville, and uh, went by a Harley store to uh, pick up a part for a helmet, just different things, and it was interesting. A couple of guys in the parts department were familiar with the videos. And, you know, one of the, the neat things about, of course, being recognized is, is, uh, is the fact that, you know, so often, and you all can relate to this because you're gun guys, gun gals, and you like to talk guns. And I'm sure you've been a party or a, your, your spouse's company picnic or something, and you're a little bit bored there, but all of a sudden you run into somebody who is a uh, a like-minded person, a shooter, a comrade, and somehow it comes up, and so you spend the next hour talking guns with somebody, so the evening turns out better than you expected, right? You've had that experience. Come on. I've had it lots of times, <laughs> thankfully. But one of the cool advantages of, of you know being recognized is that it... It's like it, it brings out the gun nuts from out of the woodwork. You know, it's a, it brings out those brothers in arms uh, who otherwise I wouldn't know about. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's people you encounter every day that might be gun collectors. They might be into firearms, the same firearms you're into. You know, maybe it's, uh, I don't know, somebody your wife works with or your husband works with or, you know, who knows? Somebody in your office you just didn't know, but it just never comes up. Well, obviously, if someone does recognize me, then they want to talk guns. So it's kind of neat because it it it, uh, it ferrets out the the gun uh, enthusiasts, and so we can have a little gun conversation wherever it might be, whether it's the Harley store, or it, in fact, we went through uh, Gettysburg, uh, yeah, as, as I told you, and in the visitor center, a couple of the guys who who worked there for the for the park in the visitor center. Uh, were familiar with the videos and they wanted to talk about guns and say hi and that kind of thing. same thing it's it's really cool because it brings out the shooters you know and so uh 
they're no longer anonymous and uh, they know that I'm probably uh, willing to talk guns. <laughs> so, so that's pretty neat. Uh, it, it, I like that. That uh, I like that. That's neat. Uh, anyway, I guess I've rambled too long. I think I'm to the point now where I'm just thinking of stuff to talk about or something because it's been a while since I did a radio show and I'm uh, got a little time here. So I'd better just control myself and quit talking about firearms. So hopefully you uh, get a chance this week to shoot, if not at least to fondle some nice firearms and enjoy those firearms. I'm sure I will. In fact, tomorrow John and I are planning to, to do a video, maybe two, and I know we have been uh, doing some little short videos, various things. We've been having fun with some just little things we, we thought would be interesting to you and we enjoyed doing. But uh, we have several firearms we need to be working on, some comparisons and, and different things. And we'll get on that uh, pronto. So good chatting with you. I don't know why you were so quiet. You ought to just speak up and interrupt me when you need to. Feel free, ask questions, and uh, I'll talk to you another time. Life's pretty good. You've been listening to the Hickok 45 Radio Show. See you on the range.